Mm-hmm. Okay, this is a song about the sacred grove, which is up Arthur's seat between between Arthur's seat and the crags. I spent many a lovely summer's evening there with all the nearest and dearest. And whisk me a line or two I can see the summer days Help to bring the words through And as long as there's a haze on the ground I'm gonna spend every minute I can With you safe and sound Some kind of peace with you I've found I'm safe and sound I'm as happy as a man can be We know we'll have to leave this place And head back down to town eventually But for now we'll sing, we'll drink, we'll talk And we'll play a merry tune It's our way of saying goodbye to the sun And hello to the moon For some kind of peace with you found I'm safe and sound I'm safe and I'm swept away, blown around by the city breeze But as long as you're whispering, it won't take long for the pain to ease And as we see the shadow creeping up the craggy wall And the deep blue evening sky still impresses us all On some kind of peace with you Good night and wake me up at the return of day. And as the laughter and the sun and warmth all but subside, I'm feeling all kinds of fine, cause with you I'm going inside. Some kind of peace with you. I found I'm safe and some kind of peace with you. I'm safe and sound. 
from Frank Burkett's run at Sweet ECA in this year's Edinburgh Festival. That was safe and sound. We promised a live recording from that last show and had it all over the website for the last week and so on, but we just didn't do it. Um, so there you go, we've delivered this week. I'm Jack Foster, you're listening to The Garden Sessions, episode 40. Um, gardensessions.co.uk Contact us at podcast at gardensessions.co.uk And joining me, according to my notes, um, I don't know about this, is um, the folk scene's very own Churchill, Rommel and Stalin. <laughs> I'm talking, of course, of Tom Harland, Dave Engels Gimble and Frank Burkett. Bag Bag Churchill. Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> well, Why did you go for not <laughs> Stalin yeah, yeah, instead so of Churchill? Dave Rommel. took Churchill. <laughs> you guys pick a dictator. Well, I, I can't be Stalin. I could never grow that moustache. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, is a, this a, is a dark, that dark intro. Very dark intro to the garden session, so we brush over it and move mm. on fast. It's a bright show, though. Tom, we've got coming up. what is coming up? We're limping towards the end of the festival line. You've got to forgive me, Jack. I've, I'm a bit kind of uh, uh, hung over today. I'm here in body, but not in mind. I was at the, the Collington Mains Beer Festival the other day. Um, consumed a lot mm. of alcohol. Anyhow, um, we've like got you, Tom. the folky news. We've got Dave's angle. Dave, any hints? Yes. Tickle um, our curiosity. Got the lust, Dave. <laughs> Tickle our curiosity. Your first hint this Tickle. week is that it's a song involving a battle between man and beast of possibly biblical proportions. Sounds biblical. epic. Well. Um, we've got the official Garden Sessions download chart. Will uh, Will One Glass Eye still be at the top spot? Only Angles knows. Only Angles has that information. Oh. I don't think we have a letters bag this week, but Alas, we do have three no. fantastic Too much festival special stuff. reports from the Acoustic Centre in St Brides. We've got Laurie Watson 3. Um, we've got Sandy Breakin, um at the Acoustic Centre, and we've also got mm-hmm. the godfather of folk himself, Dick Gochen. Um, what a treat. Sounds like one Holy hell of a show. Moly. I, well thought, Archie Fisher, I thought Archie Fisher... doesn't get better than I thought Archie Fisher was the godfather of oh, folk. Shut up, Dave. Let's not debate who the godfather of folk is <laughs> when we know that it's Dick Gochen. We've also got all the best in New songwriting and traditional folk music coming up for you. And we're going to go over to Tom now for his report, um, which he got the other night in the Acoustic Centre in St Bride's. He smooth-talked his way into an interview with Laurie <laughs> Watson after the I show. I held the microphone. And Frank held the microphone. Frank say. So it's uh, the penultimate Friday of the festival, and we're in the Acoustic Centre at St Bride's, and I'm joined by the beautiful Laurie Watson, who's just finished a lovely set here um, at St Bride's. Uh, Laurie, um, welcome to the Garden Sessions. Thank you very much. Nice to see you last Friday at the festival and we're still standing. How did you feel it went tonight? Uh, it was great fun. It's so nice to play for a home audience for a change. We've had a summer in Europe and it's fantastic to play away, but it's always nice to come home and, and hear the accents singing along. <laughs> so it was good. So you've just finished an epic tour of Sweden, I believe. How did that go? Uh, it was great. Really, really good. You had a gig every night, so it was fairly hard going and kind of like zipping across both sides of the country and we did a couple of headline spots and um, some of the larger festivals it was great it's such a good atmosphere and they're just so up for it over there it's good and you didn't manage to auction off in the Swatson to any prospective <laughs> Sweden's Swedish girls I'm so disappointed we went to Sweden with a single aim of managing to find Innes a wife so that he could stay there and unfortunately, he was on the plane home. Well, you've heard it first in the garden sessions. Any prospective focus? He plays a mean guitar. He's not bad looking. <laughs> so, uh, the garden sessions listeners will be familiar with uh, Laurie Watson 3, your first album there. What are your plans for another album? Well, we're currently collecting material. We've, in fact, half of our set tonight was new material that will go into the next album. And I think we'll be in the studio probably early 2008. So, hopefully, it'll be out next summer, which will be ideal. Well, it's sounding great. Congratulations on a brilliant set. And thanks very much for joining us on the Garden Sessions, Laurie Watson. Not at all. Thanks very much. Thank you. 
Tom with Laurie Watson from a performance at St Bride's. He wasn't, he wasn't playing on that track there. No, no, no. <laughs> but, um, Frank Wish was, was. <laughs> Frank was holding the mic. Uh, and if you'd uh, like to know any thanks, more about the, the the quest for finding Innes Watson a wife, go to <laughs> www.gardensessions forward slash dating. The best. That, <laughs> that was the best thing I've seen at the festival, though, Frank. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, uh, I would agree. I'm that. smitten. It was a cracking night. Really, really, really good. <laughs> Anyway, Frank, if yes. you want to find out more about the Garden you Sessions... Can, uh, well, you can find out more about the Garden Sessions by going to the Garden Sessions website, of, of course, course. But you can also listen to the Where Garden else? Sessions on Radio Britfolk, radiobritfolk.co.uk, and uh, 98.8 FM in the Edinburgh area, Leith where FM. Le- where Leith where lives. Leith lives. Leith lives. Leith. It's where yeah. Leith lives, if you don't know where A Leith A lackluster lives. attempt. Come on, let's go again. Where, where Leith, Leith lives. Okay, Tom. Oh dear, it's going bring to it, it Tom. Again. Bring, <laughs> bring the thunder. it, Tom. It's time for Tom. Bring it. Bring it, yeah, bring Tom. it, Tom. It's news. It's folk. What is it, Tom? It's the folky news. Mm-hmm. And the folky news brought to you this week, as ever, in association with Paddy Bart's Wee Folk Club. This is the summer. This is the festival. So we don't have wee folk clubs at the Oak, but we've got festival folk at the Oak. Every night from 8.30 to 11 o'clock, around 11 Paul McKenna and Ubeski Broad, who did a wonderful gig at the start of the year here at the Wee Folk Club, will be here on the 28th of August. And uh, Steve Byrne, better known perhaps as the founder member of uh, Malinky, will do a solo gig here. A very fine interpreter of the songs of his uh, birthplace of Angus of the northeast of Scotland. Should be a, a, a very interesting night. Just while we're at it, you know, we've got three uh, more to go. Jim Bainbridge. Uh, will bring the traditions of the west of Scotland, of the west of Ireland, and of his native Tyneside to the Oak. Melodian player and singer, fine entertainer, Jim Bainbridge, on the 30th of August. Nancy Nicholson will celebrate, well, it, I, I, I dubbed it the Four Bob Show, will be uh, on the penultimate night here at the Oak. The four literary bobs, Robert Burns, Robert Tannehill, Robert Louis uh, Stevenson, and Robert Ferguson. And, of course, the Royal Oak players will regale uh, the audience with a wee rendering of Thirst by Flann O'Brien, uh, a wee study of after-hours drinking in an Irish bar. And uh, the uh, rear is brought up, the f- big finale is Alistair MacDonald. Alistair, of course, known from television and radio, uh, one of the great ambassadors of Scottish song. And again, uh, Thirst with the Royal Oak players uh, will be uh, the interval filler, so to speak. So that brings Festival Folk at the Oak 2007 to its uh, climax and to its conclusion. The shows have been well attended so far, so let's hope that we end on a high note. Uh, on the 2nd of September, by the way, the Wee Folk Club will be back in action with Andy Fraser. Jack and I will be performing at Thirst. We've been roped into that. Have you learnt your lines, Jack? Uh, no, most of them, yeah. <laughs> Jack and Tom are in a play, and I'm going to be in other pool scenes. Fluke. <laughs> I'm oh, going no. to be recording the play for Frank's enjoyment. But this is the Folky News. The Ross on Wye Cider Festival, 31st August to 2nd September, is fast becoming one of those important dates in any festival goer, folky, or indeed cider drinker's diary. Mm-hmm. Um, situated in the idyllic Broom Especially Farm in Ross on Wye, the festival offers a chance to sample local ciders and perries direct from the cider makers um, set against a backdrop of live music Kayleigh's and an opportunity to have a go at the cider making process yourself Jack and I were there last year it was great this year's music, musical acts um, include The Poachers, who will be calling the dances at the Cayley, Toby Lovell, former Garden Sessions yes. featured artist, yes, um, a bluegrass band, Louise Richardson, and many more. A bluegrass band? A, a bluegrass band. Okay. Yeah. Um, alas, the Garden Sessions team will not be there, but hopefully we can still look forward to hearing some recordings on the Garden Sessions. Uh, visit... Uh, rosscider.com keep up to date with all the latest folky news at gardensessions.co.uk forward slash news and that's the folky news mm-hmm. cheers Tom now we get to find out if one glass eye is still at number one Dave it's over to Suspense. you the official garden sessions download chart the official garden sessions download chart This is the official Garden Sessions download chart based on free downloads from gardensessions.co.uk. At 10, it's down two for Claire Mann and Aaron Jones with Saints oh, and Sinners. Great song. At nine, it's up one for Behold the Field of Megaliths. <laughs> Behold the Field of The Pagan Love Gods. Going up the chart, that's their highest position yet, I believe. At eight, it's up one again for Rantum Scanson with Hush. At 
seven. It's a non-mover for it's our It's almost like it's the same tune in the background here, Dave. Is there a link here? It is the same tune in the background, Jack. <laughs> the Thanks. top ten theme is the Rantum Scantum song. Indeed. Who would have thought it? Thanks for interrupting. Yes. At seven. I always like to do that. <laughs> At seven, it's a non-mover for Frank Burkett oh, featuring Cassandra Steele. Like an immovable band. fortress in the nether regions of the chart. <laughs> <laughs> At seven, so pleased. It's a re-entry. Oh. My favourite tune, possibly. Your Sinead favourite Connelly of all. With Eileen oh. She's back like a virus. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave behaved himself Dave as well. Dave so nice. Dave did a good job. Moving and swiftly Frank, on. Who's at five, Dave? Moving Who's swiftly on. Show? At five, it's a non-mover for Laurie Watson, who you heard from earlier oh, with lovely. Cape on Tree. Of the tune you heard oh, earlier. Topical. At four, it's up two for Nick Allmark with Carry You to Freedom. <laughs> oh, number one as well. Now near the top of the hill This was one of your favorite places The rocks stand out like giants waiting To help us carry you to freedom If you want a song about fishing or whaling Nick Allmark or Stan Rogers <laughs> <laughs> moving on moving on at three it's up one for one glass eye with oh. Dobra Danska oh. go and say that again Angles what was that what was Dobra Danska Dobra Danska good, good, good pronunciation like keep going it. at two it's up one again for Laurie Watson She's again with When Maggie Gangs Away <laughs> And, what the, and what's, what's what? the official garden <laughs> session is number, number one. one. Let's get excited. At one, it's a non mover for one yeah. glass eye with Bio Good God. Bio Good.
the official garden sessions number one. Hey. That's Biograjanka. One glass eye for the second week running. Second Rousing. Weeks, two weeks. You're listening to the garden sessions. Garden sessions.co.uk. Contact us at podcast at garden sessions.co.uk. Available on radio Britfolk.co.uk and 98.8 FM in the Edinburgh area. Leith FM. Where, Where Leith, Leith lives. lives. That was kind of in harmony there. That was nice. No, they were talking. I was singing. Ah, okay. I see. <laughs> Nice one, Frank. Cheers. Good. Enjoyed that. Anyway, it's almost time for Dave's angle. Last hint. What? What's the point? All right. No time for you. a hint. No time for a hint. Then, Dave, what's your angle? Uh, this week's angle is the Lady of Carlisle, um, performed here by Pentangle. <laughs> Just this fair lady for to see One being a brave lieutenant A brave lieutenant and a man of war The other being a boaty captain Captain of a ship better come from afar And then up spoke that brave young lady Said I can be but one man's bride If you'll come back tomorrow morning On this case we will decide She ordered her a span of horses A span of horses at her Speechless on the ground And when she did recover Through her fan in the lion's den Say which of you to gain a lady Will return my fan again
Carlisle's classic folkers Pentangle um, performing the Lady of Carlisle. Good it's choice, a, it's a good tune, Angles. You, you're in your element this week. Um, I think a lot of people probably want to know what that song was all about, though. Dave, what's your angle? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, the story takes place in Carlisle. There's a song that starts off. <laughs> the story <laughs> takes place. The story takes place okay. in Carlisle. Uh, and there's this girl, she's beautiful, she's really, really, really beautiful, and she's sort of um, sought after by all the men of, of Carlisle. But she's determined Carlisle. to remain a, a lady, All I know of know? Carlisle is border television. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a greasy Italian restaurant behind a bingo hall. As well. <laughs> I'm sure it's a lovely place. I'm, I'm sure there's many, Carlisle. many bonny lasses. We don't want letters of complaint from no. Carlisle. We um, love all our Carlisle listeners. Oh, yeah, of course. It's a wonderful place. Yeah. Border Go television. But, I don't know. But, but anyway, she, she's determined to sort of stay, stay chased until the right man comes, you know, until, until her true love chased. turns up on the scene. Um, Good word, Angus. And she's saying, you know, unless he's a man of honour, um, unless he's a really good guy, then mm. there's he's no chance. Mm. But then these two soldiers come up. Are they good guys? Well, they're, they're both looking for the hand of the lady. Do they fit the bill? One of them's a lieutenant, a lieutenant in the army. He's a man of war. He's like a fighter. He's mm. that kind of... Mm. And the other one's a sea captain. Mm. Um, yeah. And he sails fish. all over the he's ocean. Brave, he's, they're both brave, in fact. They're both brave. Has he returned with If you were this lady, slower? who would you choose, Angles? Well... Sh- would you go for I, I a war be able to, I, I think, like her, I wouldn't be able to decide. So or she's, would you she's create a, some kind of a contest to she's, test she's, her will? She's got a test in, in her mind. She says, look, I can only marry one of you. So what you I'd need to do is come... I'd go for one with a ship, you know? Definitely. Probably. But then the lieutenant would have a, a sword. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the captain would probably have a sword Yeah, no, he'd well. probably have a few. It's foggy days. Well, let's cut- find s- out, shall yeah, we? Yeah, let's find anyway, out. Anyway, um, yeah, she, she says, come back tomorrow and and we'll we'll work out which one of you I'm going to marry. So she goes off Still and she gets, herself these, she gets herself these horses. He said which one? Um, Shut up, Jack. <laughs> a horse for each of them. And she takes them off on a wee jaunt down through the forest and all that kind of stuff until they get to this, um, until they come to the lion's den. Is that like a, a sort of brothel or something? A swingers club? No, <laughs> it's that? actually a lion's <laughs> den. A pub? Oh, right. I don't know why there's lions. I don't know why there's lions in Carlisle, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're at <laughs> Safari <laughs> Park. <laughs> well, I suppose the Roman They're at Safari Park. In Carlisle, there would have been, you know, maybe There's a Roman a gaming at one point. There certainly wouldn't you know. have been. That's Blair Drummond. <laughs> That's not Carlisle. Anyway, no. <laughs> anyway, she gets into the lion's den, and they hang around for a while. She's sort of contemplating what's about to happen, how she's going to kind of, you know, what's going to. How's she going to go play on, this? Angles? How's she going to play it? And then after about half an hour, she gets up and she says. Uh, so I've got this fan. It's it's you know keeps right. me cool. It's really important. I need to keep a hold of this. Fan. Well, it's hot in Carlisle. <laughs> oh whoops! I've just thrown it into the lion's Maybe were den. Lions are, it was she just, just what? She's thrown it into the lion's den. That was a bit deliberately. Stupid. She oh, throws it in. Silly. Why would you do that? Now yeah. she's going to be boiling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's be Carlisle. She's in Carlisle. After, yes. Well, what she says Sweating is buckets. She says uh, to both the guys, um, go down into the lion's den. Get my fan, what? which everyone no. comes <laughs> back no. gets to be my. Tom husband. is really not looking very pleased with it. I'm outraged. She expects these two poor guys to go into a den full of lions <laughs> to get a fan. I'll buy yeah. you another one, but yeah. I'm not going in for that one. I'll no. make you one out of strong, durable it's cars. It's got sentimental value. Shouldn't have thrown it in the den. Carlisle must have a fan retail outlet. <laughs> yeah, no. well, well, it's a hot place. It's got it? a safari park. <laughs> Well, and lions. We've got a safari so anyway, anyway, they, they, both, they, they both tell her to sling her hook, do they? Well, Obviously, being the, uh, sensible, upstanding chaps. No, 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 no. Just the one. That's the, a no, uh, then. That's, <laughs> that's a no. The <laughs> lieutenant says, no. not a chance. No way, no way, no way. I, it, I, I, I'm, you know, great for the women. He's a man of war, not a man of lions. I'm, I'm great that's for the women. Tenor, I'm, all for, I'm all for, you know, loving women and stuff like that, but I'm not risking my life for one. No. Fair enough. I'm Fair with, play, I'm with the lieutenant. That's good. And the sea captain says, well, I'll do it. You know, I'll go for it. He gets I, his harpoon I'm, gun you know, from the deck. I'm confident. He goes but in. The sea captain must have been on the rum, on the ship's <laughs> rum. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I, I don't so know. What, he but gets, he's he gets got a bit of bravery anyway challenge. over a fan. He goes in, he sneaks around, gets he gets the fan, it. and he escapes. No. How did he do that? No bloodshed. I think they, they were asleep. He sung them a lullaby first, crawled in, got the fan, crawled out. He sang them a lullaby. Yeah, sent them all to sleep. A um, shanty. A shanty. <laughs> a calming shanty. <laughs> calming shanty. <laughs> and, uh, well, the woman says, well, you've got the fan. Well done. Woo. Great. Let's get married. Is that it? 
That's that's, that's that is no twist. shocking. Not like a lion doesn't jump out and then maul him just as a kiss. Or maul her. Or, no. or maul her. That or would be better. Or maul her fan. No, happy ending. He proves his worth. They get married. What's the moral, Dave? Um, the moral is. Um, well, Not a big fan of lions. It's su- it's supposed oh, to, it's supposed sorry. to be sorry. <laughs> Sorry. God, I thought I'd missed that, but no, I heard it. It was awful. <laughs> Moral, um, Dave. The mor- it's, supp- it's supposed to be uh, sometimes you have to prove yourself for, for what you believe in and love and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but at, well, no, actu- actually, no. don't actually, shack up with a woman who asks yeah. you to get a fan back. Go with if the lion's yeah. he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> if oh. some blonde chucks her fan and the lion's dead, that's her own lookout. She can go get it. Yeah, yeah, there right, we go. Right. Uh, okay, I don't know if it's specified that she was blonde, but, but still, <laughs> of course, she was blonde. She had lions and a fan in Carlisle. Yeah, come on. Okay, Dave, is that your angle? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cheers. I had the great pleasure of meeting up with the godfather of folk just the other night there, and uh, we've just got cracked straight yeah, into the 1649. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Thank you very much. And if you don't know who it is, you soon will. <laughs> Indeed. I'm sitting in the acoustic centre at St Bride's with the godfather of folk himself, Dick Gotten. Um, good to have you with us on the garden sessions. That was a fantastic show tonight. Uh, the second of your run here, um, how did you feel it went? Uh, I had fun, but I'm dying with the cold because at some point since last night, when I woke up this morning, I was running nose, coughing, chest infection, a lot. So it was uh, a bit of... It was one of those where you go on stage and you think, just let me make it to the end. <laughs> I'll make it to the end, you did. Um, you're an Edinburgher, um, not born, but um, brought up and lived in Edinburgh most of your life. Do you feel there's any particular significance doing a show in the Edinburgh Festival as opposed to any other normal shows that you'd be doing? Playing in Edinburgh is always hard. There's home gigs, you know, there's always people in the audience that I've known since I was a kid, you know, that I grew up with and, and all the rest of it. You know, so there's always that slight edge of pressure there that... Uh, that com- comes from that, you know, it's like playing in an audience of your aunties. <laughs> you know, like, it sometimes feels a bit like that, but it's it's great. I love it, you know, and I, I love playing home. And I mean, you've obviously been performing for a good few years. Do you find your sets changed over the years? I mean, there seems to be there's still that element of traditional songs in there, but it's it's matched a lot more with the more political stuff as well. Do you find that's a conscious decision that you've been you've made? It's always been there. I mean, I've always, I mean, the way I was brought up was that. Traditional songs were about everything, you know, they were about all aspects of life. Every every traditional song was a modern song at some point, uh, and it's something to say, which is why it became a traditional song, because people kept it alive because it said something. And I think every generation uh, has, in a sense, the responsibility to do that, you know, to keep alive the old songs, um, because they're part of our history, they're part of our culture, they're about who we are. But also to, to, to add to that body, if possible, by presenting new songs which do the same thing today as those old songs did 300 years ago. Do you find that the political issues in those songs change over the years or do you find it's just the the names and the places perhaps that change? I think if a song is specific to an event it will probably die out when the event is passed. Um, There are songs like I sang tonight, Pete Seeger's Waist Deep in the Big Muddy, which was allegorical when it was written um, and doesn't refer to the event that it was about. And so, therefore, a song like that will constantly keep reinventing itself. I mean, it's as relevant today to the war in Iraq as it was to uh, Vietnam, which is what it was written about. And songs like that, I think, uh, songs that tend to be slightly broader in content and and not about specific details. You know, there were songs that people were singing in the early 1980s about Margaret Thatcher. Those songs are dead now, you know, because Thatcher's not around anymore. So if you if you make a song too specific then it's got a very short shelf life, which is why I, I, I tend to go for songs that are slightly broader in, in uh, reference, so that they can. And to me, the, the, the beauty of, of a lot of the older traditional ballads is that, the, that like Shakespeare's plays, they're about universal things. And so by telling a story about something which happened in Aberdeenshire in 1640, you know, it can be as relevant today as it was back then because because the, the issues that it's dealing with and the central core of the story are as relevant now as they were back then. Um, final question I'll ask you, is there, has there been anything or is there anything yet to come in the festival that you want to go and see? I think the only thing I want to see at the moment is my bed. <laughs> um, and I'm, I know the feeling. I think, I think I've, I've, seen, I've seen quite a lot of shows, mostly here in the Acoustic Music Centre, because I was away for a chunk of it, I was up in the Highlands and I've only been back for a week. So I tried to cram in as much uh, as I could here, just to hear what else is going on. But 
I think I'm music out now. I think I, I think I need bed. Bed and lamb sip. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us in the garden sessions, Dick Gordon. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Tell me, oh, I never hear the end. Of Pam Bloody Charlie, a colour and dragon. Oh, he ran like a rabbit from the glen. Leaving better folk than him to be butchered. Are you sitting in your council house, doing all your plan, waiting for the jackmates to come through your land? Try to go and down the brew with your clever in your hand, and come to all the princes in the queue. Well, there's no gods, and there's precious few heroes, but there's plenty on the door in the land of the view. And it's time now to sweep the future clear of the lies of the past that we always never feel. So don't talk to me, you scot of the brave, but if we don't fight soon, there'll be nothing left to save. Would you rather stand and watch them dig your grave while you wait for the Tartan Messiah? He'll lead us to the promised land with laughter in his eye, with all of the oil and the whiskey by and by. Three heavy gear, five summers in the sky, or win the man of the six to learn that there's no gods and there's precious few heroes, but there's plenty of The day we stand together with our shoulders at the wheel. And there's no gods. The leg end of folk himself, Dick Gochen. Um, and I that think was, you mean legend. Um, no Gods and Precious Free Heroes by Brian McNeil. Um, that song that we heard there at the end, Jack caught up with him. But you're listening to the Garden Sessions, gardensessions.co.uk. Um, also find us at Radio Britfolk, radiobritfolk.co.uk, and 98.8 FM in the Edinburgh area, Leith FM. Where, Where Leith lives. lives! Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, moving on with the show, we've got Frank. Mm-hmm. Well, it's Wednesday the 22nd of August. I'm at St Bride's Acoustic Music Centre, venue 123 of the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. I've got three words. Brecon, Wilkinson, Martin. I've got Sandy Breakin with me here. That was a great show, Sandy. Thanks very much. Uh, did you feel it went well? Well, it's always good to make it through to the end. Sometimes I don't. I just fall over. <laughs> You've been a busy man. I've been quite busy recently. I was over in Sweden with Pete Clark um, playing at a, well, it was a folk festival. It should have been called a fiddle festival. Bloody Swedish fiddlers everywhere. Fiddle, diddle, diddle. <laughs> and you know what? They all play the same tunes. That's what it sounded like to me. Uh, anyway, they probably think about the same our own music. No, it was very nice, very nice. And... Uh, it's very rural and rustic and, uh, you know, we're out in the country and Swedish girls. And Anyway, I better not continue. <laughs> well, you've got uh, Ronan Martin there. He's uh, an amazing fiddler. How did you meet him? He is almost Swedish girl looking. He's tall, he's blonde, and he's a pretty boy. Yeah, he, he's ridiculously tall, actually. He's about six and a half foot. He makes me feel like a midget, and I'm six foot two. Uh, well, I thought I was six foot two. Actually, I'm 184 centimetres, which I only found out recently is six foot one. I don't know where I made that dreadful mistake somewhere along in my life. Anyway, you're asking about Ronan. Let's yes. talk about me. <laughs> now, Ronan got the biggest clap of the night, and it's really awful because he said nothing, and he just goes fiddle, diddle, diddle in the background. Me and you do all the hard work, but he got the longest clap of the night, so we're a bit pissed off, really. Well, the quiet ones always get appreciated, yeah, don't they? Yeah, and he's <laughs> handsome and tall, and he, and he lives on his own yacht. Yes, ladies, his own yacht, 32 foot. Oh, core, it's a big one. Uh, yeah, he lives on his yacht all year round, actually. Which is incredible because I have to stoop in his yacht inside it. And Ronan, I don't know why, why he hasn't like got you know a hump yet because he, he lives on this yacht all year round. He just stoops around the place. But uh, no, he loves it. He goes, he's a fantastic sailor. And he's and, uh, taken us sailing before, isn't it? Sure. And you and uh, you and Wilkinson there on the guitar, he wrote some of his own tunes. They're very good tunes. What do you think of them? Do you like them? Sorry, <laughs> sorry, you and who? Uh, sorry, you and you and Wilkinson. 
You're, oh, that's that, the other yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 the guy who plays guitar <laughs> in, in your band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought yeah. I'd got it wrong then. Yeah, yeah, well, he's all right. Uh, no, no, I just try and slag him off as much as possible, but uh, I'm losing my touch, really. I wasn't slagging him off tonight as much as I normally do, but um, uh, getting a bit tired. But anyway, I need to think of some new wisecracks for him. But no, he's great. He's from the Borders, which he might mention 73 times during the course of a show, and he usually sings about 75% of Borders songs. But apart from that, it's an all right. No, no, he's, re- he's great. He's brilliant. I love his voice. And me and you and Matt uh, a few years ago, in a pub at, so the pub we used to play in called the Ensign Yurt, which recently sacked me, but um, I'm not going to hold that against them. We, I was actually in there last week for the first time in a year, and um, uh, it took them to the end of the night to throw me out, so that was quite good. <laughs> and uh, finally, what was that, uh, the last song you played in the set, the encore, the, the scathing attack to the kings and queens of England? Talk us through that one. Well, bizarrely, Kings and Queens of England is written by Vic Gammon, who is now in charge of the, uh, the folk course that Alistair Anderson set up at uh, Newcastle University where I have been a guest lecturer, actually, but not for many years. <laughs> <laughs> so it's written by an Englishman, so it, but it's so very it's funny. All right. it's, it's all right then, yeah. yeah, but yeah it's a scathing attack on the, uh, on the royalty, and, uh, and being an SNP man myself, I uh, love it, love it. But I, I just play the accordion, I don't sing it, so don't, don't attack me. Well, Sandy, it was a fantastic show. Thank you very much for talking Thank to you us. And thanks for coming along. You doubled our numbers. <laughs> not at all. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> She was a wild-heeled, blue-blood Cinderella And a prince charming with big ears But he had been going with the ugly sister So it all ended up in tears So Mirage, now you go to the bottle of a Cromwell Ray Parson, Tom Payne Rip this country of its monstrous carbuncle Bring sunshine after the rain Sessions lawyers have uh, just thrust a piece of paper into my hands to point out here that um, First Minister and leader of the SNP, Alex Salmond, has stated that uh, under an independent Scotland he sees no reason why the Queen could not remain head of state. There you go, we've covered our backs. That's, that's oh, what is this? Political. What is With this? The garden sessions. Oh, corporate. I know. I know. Slaves. They watch, they're, they're looking at you now. They're writing things, Frank. <laughs> Don't upset Disgusting. the lawyers. <laughs> Don't upset the man, Frank. No. And that was a pounding um, report. It was extremely mm. funny. I laughed. as We all laughed. We all did. We were all chuckling um, away. But we found out a lot about um, <laughs> the not show. So much. Not so about, much. About um, Brecon's performance ethic. You know, Found out what Brecon's height was, though. Yeah, yeah, six foot one. That's always good. Not, not yeah, a good piece of utterly pointless knowledge that <laughs> forever be lodged in my brain as opposed to something more useful. It there anyway. <laughs> it is. Oh, goodness. It's been a stonking run of festival shows, though, and um, this sound should bring us to the end of our four festival specials. In style as well. In style as well. No, no. Limping. Yeah. Yeah. Surely, Jack, yeah. that's still the start of our festival. We still haven't got it. Let's see, it's been a tough four weeks. Okay. That's the one. Hey, hey. it's over. It's finished. It's Second done. Second time's the charm. Oh. Festival done. Survived another Edinburgh festival. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> we'll be back in two weeks' time, of course. Um, two Tom, it'll be our last in. festival for a wee bit. 
And yeah, it will be. Yeah, yeah. Of course, bit. no more Edinburgh festivals. I missed out last year, so up on the fourth oh, Odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> Fool. Anyway, in next week's show, Frank, you won't be with us, but you can tell us what's coming up on it. Uh, I can tell you what's coming up on it. It's uh, you know, all the usual stuff. The you usual got, features. You know, Dave's angles. Dave's angle, not not two. Only the one. <laughs> only one. Only the one. <laughs> first show. One oh, easy, enough. easy. <laughs> if you haven't turned off already, there'll also be the Folky News. Um, the official garden sessions download chart all the usual stuff but there won't be any uh, well there, there will be a few more festival reports yeah there are still a few uh, we're, we're still going to see there might, might be something from Steve the Royal Oak players oh absolutely the Royal Oak players <laughs> I don't know if we'll be no, here no, no, <laughs> probably won't make the airwaves though. but now join us it'll be a good one well I, I won't be there but join them indeed but you will be back with us in two shows time for I a Knock and Gorek special will be and gone Tom's fine soon that'll be, show. that'll be his last show in Knock and Gorek special yes Knock and Gorek is happening again and after that, Frank, you'll be with us. Gotta, 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 I'll be a permanent fixture behind the microphone. Anyway, we're going to play out um, with um, Malinke the Langro Dune, which is performed and written by Steve Byrne, who, as Tom said, we will hopefully have a report from that next show, and that's going to be this Wednesday at the We Folk Club, or Festival Folk at the Oak. One of the last in the last week of we, um, Festival Folk at the Oak. Till next time, though. This has been the Garden Sessions, gardensessions.co.uk. Contact us at podcast at gardensessions.co.uk. From myself, Jack Foster, Tom Harland, Dave the Angles Gimbal, and Frank Burkett. Take it easy. Be at peace. Catch you later down the Folky Trail. Cheerio. <laughs>
like the long road dun, yet clays are in a bundle. Soon lost the sun, dear tramp and shun, my heart in a tumble. As a sire, he'd gang her to sight as I looked across the mountains. Far will bide with me the night, far will hard my bairn. Far are ye gone the day, my ye will ye o. Far are ye gone the day. Say blithe and bonny, gone o'er the now and done the brave to serve the king you were bound away. Fan will you come hang to old Jamie? Far are you gone the day, my willy ho. Far are ye gone the day, say blithe and bonny, gone o'er the now and done the brave, to serve the king you were bound away. Fan will ye come hame to old Jamie? Mm.